So let's talk about the application of the membrane. And I've put up there slide 62 of 92. And that's not meant as a warning that I'm going to wrap it on for another 30 slides. The point I'm trying to make here is that we're now two thirds of the way through a presentation on how to prevent waterproofing defects. And this is where the waterproofer turns up to site. So the point is, there's a lot of things that have got to be taken care of before the waterproofer even gets there to, to have a successful waterproofing system. Generally you find issues with membrane application. It starts with membrane thickness. And there you've got a, an ultrasonic uh, thickness gauge and it's measured 233 microns. All right. So I can tell you for the vast majority of membranes that should read a thousand. Right. And that's not even the lowest reading I've ever taken. All right. So generally what, for lo what we're looking for is that there's different membranes on the market, some require 800 microns, some 700, some actually require 1200 microns. It's all in the data sheet of what the required dry film thickness is. So you have to have a look at that. Detailing. So let's talk about membrane terminations, is specifically how to finish the membrane. So the termination heights for external waterproofing are completely related to the wind zone you're in. Right, so here, uh, N2 here, yeah. So minimum termination height of an external waterproofing membrane is 50 millimetres. Okay, but there's a little bit more to it. So where the membrane is to prevent waterproofing, uh, water entry, which is kind of its job, I would have thought, the finished height of the membrane above the finished surface level shall be sufficient to prevent water, including wind-driven flowing over the top of the membrane. So, you've actually got to calculate that 50 millimetres from the finished surface. So if you've got a 50 mil screed, another 12 mil of tiles, right, then the 50 mil gets added on top of that. That all make sense? And unfortunately, the standard only gives you one detail for terminating a membrane on a wall, which is basically cut a reglet, turn the membrane in, and put an overflashing over it. Right? And that applies to liquid or fully bonded sheet membranes. Okay? And that's okay for masonry construction, a little bit more difficult if you're doing frame construction with a sheet cladding. Right? If you're gonna do that, you kind of have to do it in two stages, so you'd have to put the, cut the sheet to, to that height, put that sheet on, waterproof it, put a Z flashing in, and then put another sheet on the top. Okay? Now, most liquid membrane manufacturers are quite happy to sign off that a liquid membrane is self-flashing. Okay, so you can put the membrane on, it'll flash itself, no problem, right? But, According to the standard, that would then be an alternative solution. Right, so you'd actually kind of have to run it past your certifier. This is how I'm going to terminate my membrane because I can't do that. Right, that all makes sense? So the manufacturers, most of them are quite happy to sign off that their membrane is self-flashing. Downward terminations. For balconies with a fully bonded membrane, so either liquid or sheet, the membrane may, may be terminated at the drip groove. So, waterproof the top, come down the face, come in underneath, terminate it in the drip groove. The alternative is you use a drainage angle, right, which is an angle built with a kick and weep holes in it. Right, and obviously you can't fill the weep holes with anything like sealants or grouts. Right, and I highly recommend if you're going to use those sort of angles that you cut a rebate for the horizontal leg. All right, so that it sits flush and you have the positive drainage on the membrane level. If you don't, you're going to have basically a millimetre lip at the front where water can sit. The other thing it'll do, quite likely it'll kick the front of your tile up and the first tile quite often runs backwards if you don't cut a rebate. All right, sense? It's an alternative solution. Right, so again, if, if you're going to reference 4654, 
If you don't do that, everything else is an alternative solution. Here's an example of how not to do that front termination. All right, so you can't just let that membrane swing in the middle of nowhere. For your CFC decks, <coughs> excuse me, the manufacturers actually want you to have a 40 to 60 millimeter overhang. And then you put an L-shaped angle underneath it, which forms a drip edge. Okay? So the detail there in that picture as it goes across comes down the, down the face. My opinion, that's not quite far enough. I reckon you should actually take the membrane across the bottom and attach it to that drip edge. Okay. And here's an example of how not to do the front edge of a balcony. <laughs> uh -huh. In this case, obviously, uh, Chippy might have been just a little bit short on his set out, but the waterproofer should never have touched that. All right. As soon as he put that membrane on there, he's basically saying, I'm happy to guarantee that I can make this junction waterproof. Right, so you should never touch it. The other thing while we're on that picture is quite often now the designers don't want the overhang. Right, they want a flush finish. Also fine, basically you bring this top sheet across till, you know, so you can slip the, that sheet underneath, the fascia sheet underneath it, so your joins on the, on the vertical side, not on the horizontal. Then you'd actually need to bring the membrane all the way down the face of that. Right, and your drip point becomes down the very bottom here. That makes sense? So let's talk about doors onto external waterproofed areas. So what the standard wants you to do, um, basically membrane come up the face underneath the door and then up the inside of a water stop angle. Right, so what does that mean in reality? That angle has got to go in before the door. Right. And I've maybe seen it twice in real life. And on that job, the builder actually got the glazier to put that angle exactly where he wanted it. And then the water waterproofer came in, detailed his waterproofing membrane, and then the glazier came back and actually put, put his doors in. It'd be very tricky to, for the waterproofer to actually find the exact, exact spot where that goes. But it has to go in. And of course, as you can see there, it says water stop angle returned on the side. All right. That's okay, but you can do that with a membrane too, provided you've got a solid reveal. Make sense? If you don't do it, you're likely to encounter that. All right. Wind driven rain hits the tiles, splashes up underneath the door and rots out that. All right. So this cast your mind back to a little bit earlier when I said, remember this bit, it's going to get important. I don't know if anyone remember what that was. How are you pointing, not putting your hand up? All right. pa particle board flooring shall not be used as a substrate for external waterproofing. Where does the external waterproofing finish? It finishes at that angle, right? So, according to the standard, this bit here can never be particle board. Right. Board, particle board shall not be used as a substrate for external waterproofing. So you could do the bit there with you know, CFC sheet, same thickness as particle board if you wanted to. The other option the standard gives you... Yeah, technically you could. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, well the standard says particle board shall not be used as a substrate for a membrane system, right? So if you put underlay there and then the membrane system on top, then you've got that clause covered. Okay, but just do it with Skyon or with CFC or something like that, I reckon that would be the easier way, but yeah, you're right. Alright, so where were we? Yeah, subsill sub flashing, right? Complete metal subsill flashing underneath the door, right? Interestingly enough, even though you've got the subsill flashing metal which turns up, it still wants you to have a water stop angle at the inside of that. All good? Right, so here's an example 
of how not to do a door. Right? So waterproofing has to go in before the door goes in. Right? Not after the render has been through. Okay? The other reason why I've put that picture up is that membrane there is a torch applied bitumen membrane. Right? Guess what you can't stick to them? Tiles. Right? And how I got, came across these pictures or how I took those photos was the builder rang me up and said, mate, can you come and have a look? Every single balcony we do, within 18 months, all the tiles pop. Right? So th that's quick. That saves a good two days in the construction program. Right? Because he puts that down and he's out of there and you can put your next coating on if you want. Right? But you can't do tiles. So you're actually better off waiting a little while. So, doors without step of, and that's, that seems to be what designers like. When you go no, uh, a smooth level transition from inside to the outside, the standard has a way of doing that. What it wants you to do is basically have the door sitting in a little rebate and put a grate right outside the door. Right? And in reality, it looks like that. Right? So that's all well and good for concrete or masonry construction. It'd be a little bit more difficult if it's a compressed fibro deck. Right? Also, compressed fibro decks have to drain off the outside edge, so you've got to calculate that in as well.